we know a lot about learning. And this is the good news. Some institutions seem to have a very organic way of improving. Uh, and by that I mean, um, you know, you always have interested teachers who want to try new things, um, and they do. And when you see how dramatically the um, landscape of higher education has changed uh, with so many more students now than ever before. I mean, we have over two million students in, in Canada. Uh, we had only 600,000 about, I don't know, 10 years ago. Um, so with so many more students, there are um, uh, a lot of constraints and pressures in the system, and you have to be innovative to be able to deal with uh, fewer resources, more students, and uh, you know, a global economy which you have to compete in. Now, the role of universities has been one where, uh, in terms of their research productivity, it's very easy to make research count for universities. So for example, in Canada, we have uh, over $5.3 billion raised uh, by universities for research purposes. Um, and if you look at just the top 15 universities that are the um, research intensive ones, you will find that they are producing most of the spin-offs into industry. They are producing majority of the patents and so on and so forth. So there is a very compelling case for universities to uh, be the research and development centers uh, of the country. But at the same time, they are teaching our, our students. Uh, they are serving our communities. And uh, it's surprising for me to hear the rhetoric that this uh, part of teaching is so different from this other part of, of being uh, engaged in research and development. Uh, because after all, they, they should be going hand in hand. Um, and unfortunately, we have seen uh, this kind of streaming of, of uh, uh, an academic career that can be said is more research oriented or more teaching oriented. Um, but nevertheless, uh, there are just as many opportunities to integrate um, our work than to, you know, dichotomize it and to say, well, if I do this, I cannot do that. I think if we shift the focus from teaching to learning, then uh, we find common ground both as researchers and as teachers. Both are interested in questions, uh, both uh, want to advance the field, uh, both want to do scholarship. If you have good questions, you have good, uh, good opportunities for scholarship. Um, and, uh, you, you know, in this way we, we create new knowledge uh, we create new knowledge just not only in our discipline, but we create knowledge about learning, uh, and that helps our students. And, and then those students can bring their talents and uh, you know, become the leaders we hope they will when they re-enter society in, in taking different roles. We know about uh, different approaches to learning. We know about... Um, a lot about um, uh, you know how the brain functions and uh, memory and cognition. Uh, we know a lot about uh, critical pedagogy. If we look at uh, social systems and if we look at uh, um, uh, cultural aspects of, of teaching. So if you if you if you map out the contributions that many disciplines make in in learning, we know a lot. The problem is that. A lot of these theories and frameworks that we know are far away from the majority of teachers who are actually in the front line. If, if they come to uh, us and they say, please help us uh, with a new framework or with a new theory, we don't do a very good job in translating that into practice. So I, I think this is an opportunity rather than a constraint. We have good ideas, we have the frameworks, we must put a lot more effort in translation, uh, just like other industries do. Um, if you are, uh, for example, in the health industry, 
they have good ideas, good frameworks, good discoveries, but they spend just as much time testing, prototyping, to see if the consumer can actually, you know, use the drug. We don't do that in teaching and learning. We have good ideas, and yet they stay in a sort of a silo rather than um, being diffused systematically uh, where all teachers can advance knowledge. Uh, McMaster University is known worldwide for inquiry and problem-based learning. So this is an approach, a pedagogy that's used in medical education, very successful and adopted all over the world. You know? So if you ask someone at Maastricht University, uh, you use problem-based learning, where did it come from? They will say it came from McMaster University. Uh, same at Harvard, if you ask uh, Harvard Medical School, where did this PBL come from? They will give credit to McMaster University. But inventing something in the 60s or in the past doesn't mean that you are at the cutting edge in 2014. Uh, so the next ingredient for uh, this question of how is you do need leadership. Uh, you need a vision. You need your president. You need your provost. You need your deans, especially your deans. I would say the deans are more important than than any other administrator because the deans give very powerful signals as to where the resources will go. The deans decide on priorities. You know, they slice the cake and, and they provide a, a framework where an environment where certain behaviors and certain attitudes flourish. Um, so, uh, so that second step uh, of uh, having an infrastructure of leadership is, is critical uh, and it must come from the top. Uh, you cannot just hope that organically it will just sprout, you know, uh, from, from the bottom. Um, now, the third part would be, uh, you, you know, a very basic, uh, I would say, um, connection with scholarship. So we are academics who do something different than uh, other professionals in other fields. And what we do different is we ask questions. Uh, the problem of uh, saying teaching is something very private that, you know, we should not even observe or share or do peer review. Peer review is essential in scholarship, and so it must be in teaching. We must do peer review. Uh, we must also ask hard questions about teaching and do research on teaching. And this is not just the business of an education department. This is the business of every department. So I think that kind of shift is not very difficult to make. Um, and the universities that are already doing that are finding that there is a lot of um, uh, impact on quality and on the student experience. And you don't need a lot of money. You don't need uh, uh, a lot of, um, um, I would say, interventions other than a mindset, a kind of a cultural mindset that shifts your, your um, understanding of scholarship. And I think with leadership and with the will of a, a much broader integrated view of, of education, uh, we've got all the ingredients for a very prosperous um, academy in the, uh, for the future.